Still on national matters, the federal government said the country has ramped up testing for coronavirus to 27,078. Osage Haniri, the Minister of Health, disclosed this in Abuja at the Presidential Task Force briefing on COVID-19 in the country. Haniri said this has yielded about 4,399 cases in 35 states with a gender ratio of 30% to 70% of men and women. He said 778 persons have been discharged with 143 deaths recorded. The minister added that personnel, personnel in the federal hospitals past participated in a multinational teleconference with medical and academic experts in Beijing on the COVID-19 treatment strategy of China. And joining us now is uh, Dr. John Mark Bwala. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. And it's good to see you. Good to see you too. How are you? I'm good. Now, um, COVID-19 is still with us. We're still having this conversation. How do you rate where we are as a nation, as of today? Um, well, I will say we, we progressed initially um, in good fashion, I believe, because we started lockdown in, um, pretty much early. Mm -hmm. um, and started reacting and responding pretty quick, um, virtually almost all the states. However, unfortunately now, uh, it has passed beyond the fact that we know on, about the coronavirus and how to fight it. Um, it's in the hands of individuals. So you find that, that now social distancing in some places is not well practiced, and this is in the hands of people. For instance, when you want to you, you look at the, the public places where people need to board the buses, that's a challenge. Um, in some social gathering areas that we have number of people uh, assigned, say maybe 50, 20, depends on the state, you find also that's not been complied well. Um, there are many states that the isolation centers, uh, the availability of PPEs and um, other measures that helps people that are in isolation in terms of even meals we've got a lot of complaints so we're still lagging there mm -hmm. um, we're also lagging in testing um, it's increased but it's still not there we plan to have about two million that's still not even good and we're still not even halfway mm -hmm. And talking about testing, uh, we have uh, Ms. Ndili Njide who will join us now to talk about this uh, new app uh, for screening. Good morning, Ms. Njide. Morning. Now, uh, it's welcome news to hear of a collaborative effort that resulted in an app for screening and tracking COVID-19 cases. In what ways is this a game changer? Okay, so um, of course we all know that uh, Lagos is the epicenter. Uh, we also know that uh, most of the new cases now as a result of community transmission. And we also know that quite a number of the hospitals now uh, don't um, have enough uh, bed space ex for the government to admit all the cases. In the past, we used to admit all the, the, the cases that have been you know, identified you know, they are, first of all, when you're symptomatic, you're identified, you're isolated and taken to a treatment center. But in this regard, with this app, it's a simple application which enables users to, first of all, when you download it, you can track your symptoms. The app uh, is free, it's free of charge. You can download it uh, from the iOS store, from the Apple store or from the Google Play store. And what it does is that, first of all, there are a series of questions uh, on the app. You answer the questions and it determines your risk level, whether you're low risk or you're high risk. It also asks some questions regarding underlying conditions, if you're pregnant and you have other uh, comorbidities. All these are registered on the app. Then what happens is, on a daily basis, if the onus is on the, on the individual, the user of the app, to now input uh, their symptoms. So the symptoms that are tracked are based on NCDC guidelines. So shortness of breath, fatigue, um, you know, runny nose, um, you know, all the symptoms that have been listed uh, that help identify COVID cases. Then it rates there's a rating, you know, on a scale of one to 10, one to seven, you can rate yourself based on the, the, uh, the 
severity of the symptoms. Now, what then happens is that at the back end, um, there's an algorithm that now determines your risk level based on the symptoms that you put in. So if you're low risk, you will get a message uh, from um, the, the FMC Butemeta, which is the Federal Medical Center Butemeta. There's a call center there that is manned by trained uh, medical responders who are monitoring the symptoms that are being input. And if there's a red flag based on the symptoms that you've keyed in, um, the, the responders will contact you. So if you're low risk or you have pain or you have mild symptoms, you will get advice from the medical responders. But at the point where your symptoms progress, because you've been keying them in on a daily basis, then there's contact. They call you and potentially you will be evacuated uh, and taken to a testing center. Uh, from the testing center, you are then triaged uh, if you're positive to uh, a Lagos approved uh, isolation center. So this is um, the first phase of it. Of course, we're dealing with uh, one particular hospital at this time, which is FMC Butemeta, mm. uh, who is a partner uh, as of yet. But we are hoping that depending on uh, the number of uh, cases that are being, um, you know, keyed in and the users of the app, we potentially could expand to other hospitals. Now, again, I know you've mentioned uh, how easy this app functions, but how accessible will it be to, you know, the average man and woman in the street? Okay, so uh, uh, right now we are starting with this app can only be used on a smartphone. Uh, either an Apple phone or an Android. Um, it's, we're not yet using it on future phones. So anybody that has um, an Apple phone or an Android phone can download the app. It's free of charge uh, and then begin to use. So really, uh, we know that the penetration of smartphones uh, in Lagos especially is quite high. Uh, the service currently uh, is focused on Lagos State because we want to make sure that um, the people, the epicenter gets the most advantage that we can spread out to, to other states. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you're saying that this app is already in use. So if I download this right now, I, it's just good to go. Yes. Okay. Yes. If you download it so far, uh, two days after the app was launched, we already had about 600 downloads. Uh, so people are downloading it, which is why we want to, uh, you know, create awareness about it. Because, you know, all of a sudden, uh, the power is in the, it's in the hands of the users for them to enter the, and monitor their symptoms as it progresses for those who may be asymptomatic or those who slowly become symptomatic so that, you know, there's someone monitoring, there's a medical responder monitoring and somebody's tracking. It, they all, another benefit of this is that it also helps us to map the, 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 the progress and the spread of the virus because right now we can't really tell what area of concentration, where are the people that are infected and how is it moving through Lagos. So this would actually help not just the individual but also help the government uh, to determine where best either to locate isolation centers or to locate hospitals uh, so that we are best uh, equipped uh, to deal with uh, uh, symptomatic and high-risk patients. Right. Ms. Njide, are we to expect more of this kind of innovative co uh, collaboration going forward from medical bodies uh, such as yourself? And if I may add also, what's the name of this app, just in case there are people who want to download it straight away? So the name of the app is Lucy. It's actually a collaboration between Farm Access Foundation, uh, Lucy Technologies and FMC Butemeta. And what is most important is that it's localizes the app using NCDC guidelines. And really, uh, we are in the phase where digital technology is, it, it, you know, is, is the only way, if I must say, to help bring people who are not connected to information that is going around to be able to tap into and understand uh, information around the virus and being better able to manage themselves. So the expectation is that we will continue to look at uh, innovative ways uh, to use digital and mobile technology uh, to support the government's response uh, to curb and flatten the curve by disseminating information, self-monitoring, uh, self-reporting uh, in collaboration with uh, uh, medical 
facilities and hospitals all around the country. All right. Thank you so very much, uh, Ms. Njide, for your time and for sharing your thoughts with us this morning on News on the Hour. Thank you so much. All right. We'll continue with uh, Dr. Bwala, who is here in the studio. I don't know. How excited are you about this news as a medical doctor? Yes. Um, uh, it's good to have. Um, why? Because, in fact, it's been used in China, Korea, and many other countries before now. It's still currently in use. It helps in tracking... Uh, uh, possible cases of COVID-19. Um, there might be some areas that you need to look into. For instance, definitely to help in those with um, already uh, that are symptomatic. Mm -hmm. And what I expect them to do is to facilitate quick testing for such people because sometimes you find people uh, struggling to get tested. So hopefully with this, it may facilitate people in that category getting tested faster. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like 80% of this um, of the COVID uh, cases are asymptomatic. So they have to strategize. They will probably need to pay attention because I see their focus is on those who are asymptomatic. Yeah. If we have enough testing facility, it might make sense to actually track even those with moderate cases because these are the ones that will probably be moving without knowing that they have this um, virus and probably mm -hmm. spreading it around. Mm -hmm. I mean, one thing that you, we all see now that is obvious is the fact that the, the numbers are increasing. In fact, the other day somebody teased and said, Nigeria went on lockdown where we had less than 1,000 cases. Now we are over 10, 11,000 and we have eased the lockdown. What new strategies do we need to employ as a nation? You know, what next do we need to do to continue to you know, further the whole conversation on slowing the spread and trying to flatten the curve as COVID-19 is still with us? Yes, um, we, we, not even, we don't even know our curve yet, I will say, because we haven't reached a, a peak that we can say now we are coming down. Mm. So um, at this stage to speak to flattening is kind of, because you see even it, within the states it keeps swinging. Right. Some days some states come up and then it drops again. So okay. that's probably speaking to the number of testing they are carrying or availability of test kits. Uh, it's not saying that they are testing massively and there are few, fewer cases. Now, when we lock down, there is no any confirmed cases that we had community transmission, mm -hmm. except for the newer states. So now, um, it's definitely expected that there will be increase at some point. So that's the whole idea about locking down early, is to minimize the rate. If you see the trend compared to other countries, they, they locked down when they had hundreds or tens of thousands. So while we lock down earlier, so definitely it's going to go up. So now we also cannot lock down indefinitely. So we may have to release as we're doing now and see if at some point um, there's need to also tighten it up a little bit is possible. Um, but with the awareness, it's expected that people will take into their hands exactly what to do right. Mm -hmm. Because if, you, if we already know now that with good social distancing, good hard hygiene and appropriate use of masks, is possible to contain the spread. Mm -hmm. All right, we hear of states like Kaduna, for instance, who are saying, you know what, we are overwhelmed, you know, um, and struggling with bed spaces and all of that. It, it, with such places as a focus, what more do they need to do? You know, uh, because if you compare it in comparison with other states, other states may not be struggling as they are. So for states like Kaduna, what do they need to do urgently? What I would expect Kaduna to do is um, the governor, Rufai, he started quick. He was among the first states to lock down early. Um, so that's probably their strategy. They wanted to contain it so they don't spend much or get overwhelmed. So, but one thing with emergency, the advantage of any emergency case, don't hesitate. You can mm -hmm. go back to the drawing board and check. They have uh, medical people on board. The, the, the deputy governor is someone that's, uh, in line of public health as well as the commissioner of health. This number of people can advise the governor what to do. They can go back to their drawing board and say, look, now we have cases. The lockdown, we have to start easing it. So why not increase our response in terms of isolation units, mm -hmm. holding center, and the availability of PPEs and other medical gadgets to help. Right.